Hello, everyone. I would like to welcome you all to our webinar. Uh, this webinar is sponsored by uh, VSOI company. And today we are going to be discussing a new technology, uh, sinusoidal diffraction technology and the benefits of Acrivaterinova IOL. I am Başak Bostancı and I am an associate professor of ophthalmology and a, a cataract and refractive surgeon uh, in Istanbul, Turkey. Uh, I am currently working at Dünyagöz Hospital and I am also uh, an instructor and an associate professor at Bahçeşehir University. It is really a pleasure and an honor to be with all of you today. Um, let me begin by sharing my screen and start my presentation. And after the presentation, we are going to have a wonderful panel, uh, Professor Dr. Uh, Tas uh, from Thailand and also uh, Dr. Yiru Lin uh, from uh, Taiwan are going to present uh, their speeches and then we are going to have a discussion. If you have any question, you can write it in the Q&A Q button and we are going to answer it at the, uh, at the end of our uh, presentations. Um, I think you can see my screen, right? Okay, so today we are going to be speaking about Acrivaterno experiences and the advantages of its material. Here is my financial disclosure list. When we are talking about um, how an eye all work in an eye, we have to be discussing the bio-optical properties, the biomechanical properties, and biomaterial properties. What are the bio-optical properties? the refractive index of the lens, the image quality it provides, the aberration levels, the dysphotopsia profile of the lens. What are the biomechanical properties? When you put a lens, is it stable or is it rotate? The tilt, the decentration, the axial displacement that occurs after IOL implantation, and also the folding and unfolding behavior of the lens. And also, we are not discussing enough the biocompatibility. We are always talking about PCO levels, but we are never talking about the UVL biocompatibility of lenses, the hydrophobicity of lenses, the glistening performance of a lens, and fibronectin binding capacity that affects PCO and also UVL biocompatibility. Why do we keep changing IOL materials? I know that we have many, many experienced surgeons among, among us today. They all use PMMA lenses, silicone lenses, and hydrophilic and hydrophobic uh, lenses. Why do we keep changing the materials? We started with PMMA lenses like 20, 30 years ago. The advantage was because of the molecular structure, there was no glistening, no calcification, but it was so rigid, it wasn't foldable. So you have to make at least five to six millimeter incisions, which created surgically induced astigmatism, suture problems, and also infection. So we had to skip to another material, the silicone material. It was the first foldable IOL material. It was an innovation in ophthalmology. It provided an excellent, excellent optical quality due to the refractive index. And due to the molecular structure, there was no glistening and no calcification, but there was a huge disadvantage. It showed high adherence to silicone oil. And after vitro retinal surgery, you had to take many lenses out. And the unfolding characteristic was too fast, very uncontrolled. And there was an increased risk to damage the iris, the corneal endothelium, zonules, and capsular axis. So hydrophilic lenses came to the stage. The water content of hydrophilic lenses is between 20 to 28, and the refractive index was between 1.45 to 1.47. The main advantage is the enhanced optical clarity and image quality, because hydrophilic lenses has a lower refractive index and a higher upper number. And due to the molecular structure with the hydroxy groups, there was no glistening with those lenses. Um, we, we don't speak enough about UV biocompatibility, but it is very, very important, especially in young population, especially in population that are prone to having some inflammatory reaction. Uh, hydrophilic lenses provide a very good UV biocompatibility. It is suitable for microincisional or cataract surgery, especially if you are afraid of having surgically induced astigmatism after your cataract surgery. Hydrophilic lenses are very advantageous because they can be implanted through incisions that are smaller than 1.8 millimeters. They, they fold very easily. 
The main disadvantage was, of course, the high PCR rates compared to hydrophobics. But we are going to be discussing it. It really depends on other several factors. The PCR rates, like how the uh, square edge design is manufactured, how it stays in the capsule. PCR rates is not only directionally uh, rational to uh, hydrophilic and hydrophobic properties, but there are some other factors that can also affect your PCO rate. Of course, in the uh, past, there was some calcification seen with some particular IOL models uh, with hydrophilic lenses, but those lenses are not uh, being produced anymore. And lastly, hydrophobic acrylic lenses. Hydrophobic lenses has a water content between 0.5 to 7%. And the refractive index uh, is a little bit higher, 1.47 to 1.55. The main advantage is due to the molecular structure, calcification is much lower, and there is a very good capsular biocompatibility with a less rate of posterior capsular opacification. They provide a good optical quality as well, but the main disadvantage is glistening. Glistening occurs due to the polymeric structure of hydrophobic lenses. And also on hydrophobic acrylic lenses, protein and fibrin deposits may occur on the surface of the IOL. So if we are going to talk about the biomaterials, if UVL biocompatibility is important in your patient, if the patient is prone to having inflammatory foreign body reaction, like UAITIC eyes, like young eyes, you have to go and select a more hydrophilic lens. But if you are afraid of having an early PCO, of course, hydrophobic lenses are more advantageous because the contact between your lens epithelial cells and the IOL material can cause proliferation. And with hydrophobic studies show that there's a less proliferation, less myofibroblastic metaplasia um, that uh, ends with a less PCO rate. Again, fibronectin binding capacity decreases after hydrophilic lens implantation, uh, which means a less inflammation rate, a less endophthalmitis rate, and less accumulation or deposit on the lens. If you have a uveitic patient, go ahead and pick a hydrophilic lens. This is very important. But uh, after hydrophobic lenses, the inflammation rate is a little bit higher. End of time, mitis rate is higher, studies show. But the my but mechanical stability is higher with hydrophobic lenses, and the PCO rate is lower because of the uh, bioadhesion um, power after hydrophobic lens implantation. What about glistening? We always say, mention glistening and don't talk about it. But glistening is very important for the optical clarity of a lens. Glistenings are aqueous field micro uh, vehicles in the IOLs. They are not water filled packets, but rather special regions in which water coexists with the polymeric network of the IOL. So you have to change the polymer of the lens if you don't want any glistening in your lens. It is highly dependent on the IOL material and the manufacturing process. And the incidence and severity are reported to be higher in hydrophobic acrylic materials. And severe glistenings, as you all know, can reduce uh, the contrast sensitivity and visual acuity. Um, let's talk about biooptics. How we see after cataract surgery also depends on the aberrations, the diffraction and light scatter uh, in that eye, as well as the photoreceptor size, spacing and elaboration of neural pathways. You cannot change the photoreceptor size or the neural net pathways on your patient, but you can change the aberrations, the diffraction and light scatter. Because the biomaterial, the material of the IOL can affect the refractive index, monochromatic aberration, the upper number and down uh, chromatic aberration, light scattering, dysphotopsy, and optical clarity. The refractive index is very important. IOLs with a higher refractive index are the most common cause of positive and negative dysphotopsy. Studies all show that. High refractive index IOLs uh, are associated with an increased front and back light scatter, significant amount of glare, higher order aberrations, both monochromatic and chromatic, and higher internal reflection. This is all less with a hydrophilic lens because they have a lower refractive index. So that means less positive and negative dysphotopsia and less scatter and uh, monochromatic and chromatic aberration. 
Chromatic aberration and albin number are very important. Chromatic aberration is actually the largest aberration that cannot be corrected by spectacles or lenses. The difference in the refractive index of the ocular media uh, cause a shift in optimal refraction for different wavelengths. So it causes a longitudinal chromatic aberration. When you have a higher refractive index, in the IOL material, like you will have with hydrophobic lenses. You will have a less up number and you will have a higher longitudinal and transverse chromatic aberration, therefore more dysphotopsias. And your vision will be like this with more hydrophobic lenses. Light scattering are the defects or irregularities in ocular media. The scattered light or stray light diminishes the contrast of the image. And again, surface light scattering is particularly related to hydrophobic IOLs. So we are always, always concentrating on the PCO levels or about uh, the hydrophobic lenses and um, emphasize the PCO levels as is the most important thing after you put an IOL in, but actually the optical clarity of your patient and the visual quality of your patient is more important. And to sum up, the hydrophilic materials provide an enhanced optical clarity and image quality thanks to the lower refractive index and higher up number. And due to the molecular structure with hydroxy groups, they provide no glistenings. They provide a very good UV albio compatibility. They are very resistant to fibrin deposits, which is very important in your UVI patients. And they are suitable for microincisional cataract surgery and can be implanted through incisions smaller than 1.5 eight millimeters. Uh, but there is no such thing as perfection. But in striving for perfection, we can achieve excellence. The lens we are talking about is really in the pathway for trying to strive for perfection, achieving very excellent results in many of our patients. We are going to be discussing the properties of the lens in the next part of the speeches. So just I'm going to um, talk about my results uh, of the study. This is our study. We did the study in 2020 uh, and it was um, in Annals of Medical Research. It was published. The refractive results, visual quality and patient satisfaction with a new trifocal intraocular lens design. Uh, we evaluated 60 eyes of 30 patients. The male to female ratio was 10 to 20. The mean age was uh, 62. Cataract patients between 45 to 78 years were uh, recruited. And um, the IOL power was between 19 to 27 diopters. The outcome measures were uncorrected distance visual acuity and corrected distance visual acuity at six meters, which were measured with ETDRS charts. And the results were reported in logmar notation. The binocular uncorrected near visual acuity was measured at 40 centimeters. Intermediate uh, visual acuities were uh, measured at 60 centimeters under photopic light conditions. Monocular defocus curve testing was performed under photopic conditions, starting from minus three to plus 1.5 diopters with uh, 0 0.5 diopters increments. The contrast sensitivity was measured with a standardized uh, CS chart. And at the six, six months postoperative visit, all patients were asked to grade their limitations in performing certain vision dependent daily activities. The mean spherical equivalent was 0.37 at first month, uh, with the, which decreased to 0.25 at the six month visit. The mean cylinder was 0.36 at the six, six month visit. This is the uncorrected vision in decimal. Uh, you can see a slight increase towards the first week. And after the first week, um, it was very good in most of our patients. And uh, this is the cumulative binocular uncorrected intermediate uh, visual acuity. As you may see, um, by the end of six months, most of our patients were seeing Jaeger 1 to Jaeger 2 binocularly in the intermediate vision. And also um, at the end of six months, again, most of our patients were seeing Jaeger 2 to Jaeger 1 um, in near visual acuity. This is the defocus curve. As you may see, we have two spikes at the emetropic focus, the distance focus, and also for near focus. But 
the slope is not very steep. It is a very uh, slow uh, decrease, uh, which is between the functional, the physiologic limits. And uh, this is because of uh, the sinusoidal technology. We will be discussing it sh shortly, and uh, which is very satisfactory for the functional needs of our patients. This is the contrast sensitivity results in the six months. As you may see, um, we all know that uh, trifocal lens technology uh, provides, uh, or uh, you know, like uh, results in a, you know, like a decrease in contrast sensitivity. But as you may see, the mean results are between the physiologic levels uh, for patients. How about the patient satisfaction? Um, six patients reported halos at one month evaluation, but this percentage decreased to 13% after six months. Three cases reported severe halo in the first month, which dropped to two cases after six months. Bothersome glare that would interfere with nighttime driving was evident in three people at one month, which decreased to one person at the end of six months. 29 of 30 patients reported spectacle independence. One patient whose postoperative spherical equivalent was a little bit hyperopic necessitated glasses for reading small print. And at the uh, end of six months, 96% uh, of the patients related their, rated their visual quality as good uh, or very good for all distances. To conclude, these were all satisfactory results, both for me and for my patients. Um, I think the results are due to the light transmission rate, the upper number, the MTF scores, very collaboration controlled, and good de depth of focus of this lens. Uh, we are going to be talking about the toleration of minor off-target refraction and minimal decentration uh, by this lens. And this lens provided an excellent near and intermediate vision for my patients. Thank you for listening to me. I am going to stop uh, my screen share, and I am going to give the word to Pro Associate Professor uh, Dr. Tas Sangunsak, and he's going to present his uh, speech. Thank you. Okay. Okay. After the, we, we know about the, the material, we will talk about the sinusoidal and traditional diffraction IOL. I'm Tas from Thailand. This is my financial disclosure. Before we talk about the sinusoidal, you should be know about the, the traditional trifocal. What does it mean? In the past, we have only the refractive IOL that monofocal focus. And now in the past, we have the bifocal. We have the concept about the, the prism or the Fresnel lens that can speed the light to the two point, far point and near point as the, the outcome to pronounce the restore. And on the right box, you can see that make the, the light, the light Convergent to the, the the light, and on the another one is show to the the parabolic refractor that in the past we used the, this concept to make the bifocal IOL. The base diffraction is mean it's like the, the seesaw seesaw lens one point of the ring to make the two four side far point or and near point or the far point and intermediate points. When we develop the trifocal IOL, we make the two ring together. One is a, on the left side, you can see there. One is a far and near, like the bifocal, and another one is a far and intermediate. When we pass together, it's made to the trifocal. In the, in the market, can, can I show the, the many brand about the five vision? The five vision is a apodite through plate trifocal lens that in the central we have about six ring in the three millimeter, but the of size HE RISA 
is a combination of bifocal and trifocal. Trifocal is on the central, but in the periphery is a bifocal. And the last one, the panoptic from the alcon, is a combination like the far point and near point and far point and intermediate. And is a launch like the quadrifocal, but in effect, it's like the trifocal too. But in the periphery, it's a monofocal lens as a refractive IOL. Each one is a can see far point, intermediate, and near, but in the dim light, the scatter of the light or the effect of grand harrow may be different each brand. When we look at look at look at the sinusoidal design, it's a new design. It's different the basal diffraction because uh, it design like the sinusoid, like the sinus wave, because uh, in the easier circle of the sinus can make the three nodal for side distant, intermediate, and near in the one of the light. You can see the of the new equation in development. It's like the P plus one, P plus zero, or and P plus P P minus one. That when the light touch to the the material is scattered to three four side in the one term. But in the traditional or the best diffraction, is composed of P A or N P A plus P B. This is one the bifocal and another one P A and P A plus two P B make the distant and intermediate. The equation in the mathematics is different. That wiser, the sinusoid can make the three, four side in the one light. That is mean when you, when, when you make the three, four side, you, not, you don't need the overlapping the pattern. The pattern, what is, what is mean the pattern? The pattern is like the node and D node to the constructive or reconstructive of the right. When we have the three, four side in each light, the grand hollow will be less. And uh, in this side in the three millimeter, when you make the three, four side, you need only the three ring in the central that you will make the less and grand hollow. That correspond with the previous study that showed the, the patient that implanted sinusoidal will be Happy and less can hello later. As I said, Professor talked before. When we confirm that, you can see the energy transfer on the upright. You can see the two green high density. That is mean the like the two by four call. But on the sinusoidal, you can see the right uh, three green high density. That is mean you can. In one, four, in one light, you can forecast to the three, four side in the same time. We have a study about the optical design and performance of dry focal. It shows like this, the central, we can make the wider in the market about a 1.4 in diameter. That is mean when you have a central, it's wider. When you, the patient have the D center or the angle kappa, any positive or negative, the patient will be acceptable in this. The gland harrow, what is the effect to, to this one? Mostly in the breast diffraction, all brands have their gland halo, less or more. You can see the either higher gland halo, the patient will, you will have their visual disband or the vision drop. Only the, mostly in on the dim light, like the the noon to the sundown, and that had a problem if to, to driving. And anyone to put the it up, you can see the on the right, the, the patient implanted it up, can see the spider web or the starboard that made a big problem. In the past, we try, we try to talk with the patient if you drive in the night, we not cheer up to put the Trifocal lens because have the many problem, but the sinusoidal maybe maybe can can do that. Can I can I share about the, my one of my patient that implanted trifocal? He a Thai man, fifty seven, 
but he have the problem of about the NS anisocyanine. You can see on the right is a high acid mechanism, but on the left side is a hyperopic eye that make the accommodation to see the both side really well. I put the different design on the right. We put the trinova tolic and the left side put the trinova. The, el the outcome pretty cool like the not the basic to talk about the first week he got the vision the two 20 30 or the six part nine and one one month see better and get very well to the result but he complained a little bit about the the leading because I'm tired of refraction is so be okay but he can play the hobby like a snooker on the dim light or the bright light, you will be okay. Because a snooker not the need the near, but need the intermediate, okay. The grand hello, we realize he very happy, but only the reading he like the, can read only the J4 letter. But you can see on his feet, you can see the forehead, it's like the vertical right here, because he was a hyperopic eye, he need a, Accommodation or time. If we talk about the need the relax the spasm in this one, we try to put the Botox in his, in this area. And after that, his field good vision can read better. The intermediate vision is a 0 0.1 and near vision is a 0 0.12 or the J2. He is a very happy in put the two lens in both eye. I think the 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 sinusoidal diffraction is a it's a new innovation and like the side wave that make the in the east link can make the eastern intermediate and near in in one light. This means the light has mission is very good. About the ninety two lost only the eight percent that lowest in the in the market. Then have the center wider that acceptable for the B center or the, the patient have the ankle apple. I think there is a new technology and new design and match with the all patient that need the individual glasses free. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you Dr. Yeah. It was a great presentation. Now we are giving the word to Dr. Uh, Yi Rulin from yeah. Taiwan to present her results uh, of Aquaturnova lens. Dr. Lin. Okay, thank you for introduction. I'm Dr. Yi Rulin from Taiwan. It's my honor to be here to share my clinical result of Agrica Chinova. I think successful PCL implantation based on three factors, patient, surgeon, and the premier ILL. Among them, I think patient is the main character because he or she is the final user. In my clinic, when a patient inquires and requests uh, PCL surgery, we will begin the process of pre-surgery preparations. First is the patient selection, since the patient is the main character, and then patient education. I think this is very important for me because I believe that the outcome after our IOL implantation does not always meet the expectations for all the patients. So I think it's necessary to educate and converse with them about the results and the benefits and more, impen more important, uh, the risk of the surgery. And then biometry and consultation. And at the end, I identify, identify the treatment goal with my patients. I always tell my patient, Lisa Taylor said for you. And we start patient selection. When a patient decided to undergo cataract surgery, we ask them to complete this lifestyle questionnaire before surgery. 
It's not only, not only helped me to survey more information about their habit, but also more precisely understand about what vision performance they desire, their occupation, glasses independence expectations, light driving frequency, and the reading habits uh, for near function requirement like newspaper or ebook and reading distance and uh, their financial status. And if they have any insurance support, is it is important, it's a design, decisive factor. And patient education. I think patient education plays an important role regarding the expectation after surgery. The more knowledge the patient have, they have, they have more, and they, they will more know what they need and uh, can make a proper decision. All patients have to study eye anatomy, understand where the lens is and how eyes work, and the less the functional of ILL. There are many different uh, kinds of ILLs. Our staff member will instruct uh, the patient on eyes anatomy and difference of different ILLs in the market and discuss with the price of the ILLs that they can afford. Then we uh, have patient go through the biometry. Uh, visual acuity tests, intraocular pressure and up Tomatry are standard examination, and I always confirm the patient's dominant eye. Dry eye test evaluation is important because the dry eye disease can affect the patient's visual quality after operation. And standard IOL master topography. And the last one, I will do the OCT because it, it is important to rule out some abnormal macula or optic nerve disease. After the patient education and examination, I will take some time to communicate with the patients and double check the questionnaire. And I will check if they prefer monocular or binocular surgery because binocular PCL implantation is much better. However, if they want monocular surgery, it would be okay too, but I will let them know some of the risk or situation they will face. Everyone wants one perfect visual performance with premium ILL after cataract surgery, including least dysphotopsia, long-term stability, continuous vision, large optic zone and high fault tolerance. For me, ideal IOL should be easy to implant and fully equipped such as adapter of IOL. I think if patient is happy, then the doctor is happy as well. And I think that this photopsia definitely has a huge effect on patients and it's an important issue for me after their IOL implantation. So it's the most important and primary goal to choose the IOL that this is photopsia for my patients. When I come, when when I first came into contact with Trinova, I was amazed by its sinusoidal sign design. And you can see the smooth surface is very different from other PC IOL. Thanks for the unique, perfect design. It could provide additional benefit to my patients. And um, when you, uh, let, let me see, uh, when you compare the Trinova surface profile to traditional trifocal IOLs, you might see that the sinusoidal surface, uh, that's the sinusoidal profile on the lens is very smooth and the ring can create, one ring can create three foci which means they are only half ring number compared with other trifocal IOLs. Thanks for the sinusoidal design, 
It definitely offers less halo and glare to the patients, especially under mesotic or uh, mesotic conditions. And this is one of the reasons I choose Chinova LL for my patients. So far, no patients have complained me about the dysphotopsia. The study shows that Chinova can provide approximately 92% of light transmitted to the retina compared to other trifocal ILO in the market. They are 12 to 15% 50, light loss, which means light transmission is not good. And you can see in healthy individual at the age of 30, the light transmission is 95%. So when you compare 92 to 95, it, the light transmission of the Chinova is extremely close to the natural lens. In summary, Chinova has a no over, overlapping sinusoidal diffraction, which enhance more light oxidization, less glare and halo, and more efficiency. Chinova has balanced light distribution in photopic and mesotic condition. The ratio for far, immediate, and near light distribution is approximately four to three to three. So the patient can have good vision whether in a photopic or mesopic condition. And one of the feature of Chinova is large optic zone, which provides some benefit to the patients. Large optic zone can elevate the aerial tolerance, such as low degree of optic medicine, angle-kappa, IOL disintegration, biometry measurement deviation, or IOL slight tilt. Chinoma has large 1.4 millimeter optic zone. It can provide 0.7 millimeter angle kappa tolerance. This is friendly to patients and doctors. Chromatic aberration control is re really important. Chinoma has the highest AB number in the market, so it can reduce light dispersion and improve optical performance. Chinova also provide photo protection. You can see this curve in Acriva, which can block most UV and some violet. And what I really like about the lens is wide range adapter power from zero to 32. And aesthetic medicine correction is also available with Chinova Toric. I think it's very friendly product to doctors and patients, especially the ones with high myopia. Now I'm going to discuss the benefit of plate IOL compared to c loop IOL. This journal is published in 2020, discuss the comparison of rotational stability between C-loop haptic ILL group A and plate haptic Tori ILL group B in myopic eyes. The result is the plate ILL has less post-operative rotation than C-loop ILLs. You can see this image shows that no correlation between actual lens and the rotation of Tori IL was identified in group B. Certainly, less residual aesthetic medicine is found in plate IL group. This schematic shows that torque of C loop IOL compared with the steady fixed force in plate IOL. And we can see that the longer that, that the actual lens, the greater rotation the C loop IOL. So we come to a conclusion that the plate haptic IOL might be a better choice for myopic, myopic cataract eyes with corneal astigmatism because of reduced post-operative rotation. Let's see our data analysis. 
we collect 25 patients with 42 healthy eyes between 2020 to 2022. They are 10 male and 15 female, aged from 36 to 76. The mean age is 91.5 year old. And actual length range is very wide from 20 to one point uh, 22.15 to 29.65 millimeter. The beam value is 25.26 millimeter. IO adapter range from low degree 3.5 to 24. And so you can see that nearly half the patient have longer actual length. It shows there are many high myopia patients in Taiwan. This is an analysis of post-operation visual outcome at one week, one month, and three months. Visual acuity average is 20-25 in post one week and gradually getting better. The vision usually comes more stable after one month post-operation. And this analysis data is really shocked me because the post-op optometry has wide range from zero plus 0 0.25 to minus two. But the visual acuity can maintain almost 2020, even at minus two. Even at minus two D event, uh, deviation, visual acuity still can reach almost 20, 25. I think that's because Chinova provide continuous vision due to its original trifocal design. And let's look at the patient complaint after operation. Three patients complain of near insufficiency, but it's real, relatively okay and doesn't have much impact on their daily life. There was no complaint about halo and glare. In the past, halo and glare was the most troublesome issue to patients and doctors after trifocal LL implantation. For me personally, it's not a one, it's a wonderful result that halo and glare is not a problem anymore. And none of them need glasses anymore. No one complained about poor vision quality in dim light. Uh, in summary, for me, high patient satisfaction is the most important of all. I will show some case for everybody. This is 30 year old male, young male, who is a computer engineer and also a novice daddy. However, she couldn't take care of his baby due to poor vision. So he came to my clinic for help. After inspection and evaluation, he decided to have cataract surgery. Both of his eyes were three plus nucleosclerosis. He had nearly 20 minus degree of myopia. You can see his actual lens in both eyes are up to over 29 millimeter long. And I confirmed that his right eye is dominant eye. And we can see KRT show that he had a little astigmatism. I choose plus 3.5 diopter of Chinova for his both eye, while his left eye was needed to correct for astigmatism. Refraction target was nearly zero in both eyes. And post-op visual acuity was 2020. Post-op refraction was minus 0.5 in right eye and minus one in left eye. Patient feel great vision in all distance. Case two is a 62 year old female. She's retired. Her hobby is watching TV and cooking. She desired glasses independence. The value of optometry shows minus 9.75 for right eye and minus 5.50 for the left eye. Actual length is longer than 25 millimeter and her left eye was dominant eye. I choose Chinova Toric for her both eye. 
she underwent right eye surgery first. However, she felt that near distance vision is not enough post operation. So I adjust the target for her left eye to be more minus. Finally, she had good vision in all distance. She especially mentioned that her eyesight was bright even on cloudy days. We can see the right picture shows the position of Trinova toric at four months post operation. It can be seen that the angle was almost the same as calculated before the operation. It's indicated that Trinova toric has a good long-term rotational stability. And the same for her left eye. In summary, this is this is why I like to implant Trinova toric IOL for astigmatism correction because it's plate design. And K3 is a 60 year old female. She is a bank president. She would like to have PC IOL implantation as her birthday president. Despite the vision was good with spectacle, she felt blurred vision especially halo and glare happened at night. She had binocular cortical opacity. Actual lens is a little bit long. Post-op, she got 2020 vision for both eyes. The corresponding optometry are minus 0 0.75 for right eye and minus one for her left eye. She was very satisfied with Trinova because she had good vision in all distance and the halo and glare no longer appear at night. And this is our near distance function test chart to evaluate patient visual acuity. I'm going to share the test outcome for this patient by two videos. This is near distance. This is for intermediate distance. Okay, so you can see that the patient got 2020 vision for near and intermediate distance. She was very satisfied with Trinova because she could have higher quality for life after implantation. And case four is a 43, uh, a 53 year old male. He was a sniper trainer. She, he complained about blood vision when he was shooting. So he decided to request cataract surgery. His dominant eye is right eye and actual length is long. Post operation visual acuity was good, and he was also very happy that he can go back to his work again. Discussion There are many high myopia and low actual lens patients in Taiwan, and many of them desire glasses independence since young but refractive surgery is not suitable for some high myopic patients. Refractive surgery may leave residual myopia or post or presbyopia. It's not achieved the goal of glasses independence to these mid-age patients. So refractive cataract surgery is a potential solution. In the past, PCIO selection was restricted 
in long assurance patient. The past strategy for glasses independency was mono vision with my binocular monofocal ILL. However, some patients may suffer from vision imbalance, dizziness, headache, and balance while up and down stairs. The steady security should be concerned. Poor visual acuity and poor contrast sensitivity in dim light also disturb in high myopic patient. High light artization, high AB number of the IOL can improve outcome of post-operation, especially the patient needs to light driving. So I think Acrica Chinova is the solution because it's unique sinusoidal design, large optic zone, highest AB number, and uh, haptic design, effective photo protection, and also wide diopter range. The most important is up to 99% patients are satisfied, satisfied with Chinova. So in summary, I think Acuo Trinova is really a good option for cataract patient who needs correction for trifocal lens implantation. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Lin, for your wonderful comprehensive presentation. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have time for a lot of questions, but we, we have a question from the audience that uh, we can, I think, spare like two minutes and then we are going to have to wrap up. But if you have any questions, please ask VSY representatives and they will get the answers uh, quickly to you. Um, one doctor from the audience asked, please explain about the loss of light of the traditional trifocal IOLs. Is it due to scattered light? How does Trinova improve? Uh, I think Associate Professor uh, Dr. Tass uh, would yes. like to start first. Yeah. Uh, the, can I answer this question? The light is a side wave, but the traditional, when the light pass to the seesaw structure, when light touch to the tip, the speed the light to the far side and near side, it looks like the by four side. I talk about the, the, the traditional four side, the, the, the traditional design that the two four side, that when you speed the light and when light bring together, it's like a constructive and destructive wave that wiser the light is lost. These are common in the traditional design but the sinusoidal is not a seesaw. It's a sinusoidal wave, like the, the wave, like, the, like this one. In the one wave, you can see the in the upright, the light pass to, the, to, to upright is for the far. In the downward is for the near. In the, it, in the central is for intermediate. When light pass to the, the center of the, the sinusoidal wave, is like can make a three, four side in the one light. That, Sometimes it's no, no destructive and con consecutive wave together. That's why the, the light transmission is higher to the 92%. The light loss just 8%. These are make the make the result that the show the result the gland halo is really low. This, this is my my answer to, to the, this question. Thank you so much. Dr. Lin, do you want to add something? Uh, I think because when I see the Chinova in the uh, microscope, you can see that light transmission is really relatively, relatively good. And uh, I think it's the, due to the smooth surface. So the light uh, transmission is perfect. Yeah. So. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I both agree with both of you. Um, unfortunately, we have to wrap up right now. Uh, I would like to thank uh, all our panelists today for being with us and sharing their experiences with our audience. I would also like to thank VSY Company uh, for this wonderful webinar. We all learned a lot from each other uh, and we are hoping to be together in future webinars like this. Um, to sum up, we discussed the advantages of a new technology today, sinusoidal vision technology. Thanks to this uh, new design, 
uh, it is possible to provide three foci at one wave. And uh, this helps us to obtain uh, three focuses, three foci with only one ring. Uh, less rings means less light scattered, less halo, less dysphotopsia. And uh, due to the, thanks to the uh, big, large central part, this lens is very tolerant to small decentrations. It is a very forgiving lens for our patients and our, for our surgeries. So I would like to thank once again for all of you for being with us today. Uh, and I hope you will have a, a very good day. Uh, thank you.